Hello, my name is <laughs> David Hernandez, and I'm here with my co-star, I guess. Gabriel Negrete. We, we still have no clue what we're naming this podcast. No, no, we don't. We have a few suggestions, but even then I forget what they are. We're just two idiots talking about books. Yep. Might just call it two idiots. Uh, ignore the paper sound. That's, just, that's my summary, because I can't remember everything about this book. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. There you go. So... We're going to try and, like, speed run 10 chapters of this. All right, so starting off one. Here we go. Chapter six and... What? Chapter six, uh, A Boat and a Boy, it takes place in 19- 1952. So, uh, in this chapter, basically, Paul used to get, uh, what, more army money since he was in World War II, you know? Okay. And then Kaya is obviously worried, seeing as the only her only family is, is about to leave her again. And for who knows, maybe for good. Like, basically all her family left. And something weird that Pa does for Kaya is that Kaya waves at Pa when, she, when he's leaving. And Pa, like, does a little... He does a salute, sort of as a goodbye... Which is, you know, weird. This is a person that's an abuser, and he's kind of, I guess, showing an affection for Kaya that don't worry, I'll be back or something. Something the mom didn't do. Yeah. This this isn't our first time doing this. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like you said, it was more than Ma did, which she didn't turn back. She didn't do anything for her. She just... Dip. She dip. <laughs> And then, so, later on in the day, Kaya takes Pa's boat and meets a boy, a blonde boy. And this per- this boy is her brother's friend, and he's called Tate. Tate's basically our introduction to actual, like, love, romance love. Like, the love interest so far? Yeah. Okay. He's our love interest. But Kaya kind of... He, Tate waves at her, but she kind of ignores him and goes on her way. Damn, so she cold as shit. Well, yeah, because, like, um... Wait, how old is she? Like, seven. Okay, yeah. She's not He's, like, twelve. Like yeah, yeah. He at that age, but she ain't yet. She, just wait for her to grow up. Yeah, funny you mentioned that. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah. And she, she, you're right. She is kind of hesitant to take because, like, her, de- or her mom told her, like, Watch out for boys because they're like they're kind of like animals hunting for their prey, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I think pretty sure we all mature enough to understand what that means. Mm-hmm. Some of us tried getting our prey, and some of us fail. <laughs> yeah, and Kaya ignores Tate kind of and goes on her merry way, but she gets lost and lost, and especially it's a bad time because the storm's coming in, so. As she she gets the idea of basically turning back and asking Tate for help, and he does, and we get some characterization from Tate, cause he takes her back home, all the way even until like even when Kaya tells him, or like signs that, hey, I know my way back, you can leave me. He still goes on, so it's kind of a gentleman type person, okay, or Prince Charming or something. Prince Charming, all right, if that's how you want to take him as. What 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 would you say? What would you say? Maybe he's just loyal to you know. His friend. That's her sister right there. Or his sister. So of course he'd want to take care of it. Unless he is being a gentleman. He just wants, as you say, to capture some prey. I don't know. He's 12 years old. I don't think he'd have anything with bad intent yet. 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 Exactly. Yet. So, after Kai basically gets back home, there's two things she wants. She wants the boat so she can go out more. And she wants to take like well she she has like a sense like she she feels like an attraction towards him uh, not love but it's, he gave he, he's like company yeah, yeah okay that, that's how they start uh, yep <laughs> <laughs> funny that you one of one of them is trying to go after your prey and it's not Tate. so and then later on Tate goes back to like his village or town and there we meet his dad scupper who is a contrast to Erd's Spock, because, like, Scupper is basically 
everything that Paul isn't, but they also have some similarities. They, um, both of them have lost their wives in one way or another. They only have one child. And But the difference is that Scupper loves Tay because, well, that's his only kid. Mm-hmm. And Pa, well, <laughs> he's kind of a jerk. Yeah. So, I mean, the, uh, also the contrast in, like, one has fam- has their familial love and one of them lost their familial love, but's on the verge of trying to come back. Okay, kind of like sparks and whatnot. Yeah. And then that's basically the end of chapter six. We're on to chapter seven, which is called, I believe, hold on. Chapter seven, the fishing season, and it's so I think nineteen fifty two, and after trying to get a bribe out of Paul, she cleans up the house and in hopes that he'll let her use the boat, like how he let her brothers use the boat. But thing is, they had to fish for food to use it. Mm-hmm. So when Paul returns, he appreciates he he, he appreciates it in his own little way for Kaya's cleaning and cooking. And then um, seeing the food, obviously they basically eat and eat like a family. They laugh and bond over like cornbread. You can get all cornbread, eh? Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure all, we like cornbread. One of us more than the other. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. But we also see like the, almost like the re- reignite, reignition I think the sparks of basically their family love coming back. Even though it's only two people. Yeah. Well, you don't need, you need a lot of people to have a family. Yeah, but the more the merrier when it comes to family sometimes. Yeah, it's also not great that I, uh, that's the only family member you have bonding with is your abuser. Yeah. That's not great. But he's trying to, I guess, make a difference. So far. Yeah. And then Kai basically, I guess, she gets what she wants. And that uh, Pa, Kaya basically kind of lies of why she wants to use the boat to, like, get fish. Mm-hmm. And Pa laughs at first, but then he's like, you know what, all right, I'll take you fishing. And then laughs about it, Hartley. And then he, he does good on his promise and takes her fishing, but he also gives Kaya, I guess, we can infer, like, the first gift he ever probably gave her, which is uh, his old World War II knapsack. And obviously has some symbolism because the knapsack has a lot of hidden pockets and a bunch of pockets kind of symbolizing his secrets. And the deep pockets are like secrets he holds deep within him. All right. I guess that's one way to say it. I have no interpretation. I'm just saying that's one way to say it. Oh, yeah. but (laughs) Everyone will probably have their own interpretation, but that's a good one. I like that one. What would you think? I have no clue. (laughs) Yeah, fair enough. You, you haven't read this. Exactly. Yeah. So, on their way to fishing, Kaya sees, sees Tate. But also, we see her pa kind of warns her again of Tate. She's like, watch out from, for them white trash, you know? Oh, so Paul's racist? He's also white. Oh, what the? <laughs> I, I guess that's just trash talk. Then. Yeah. And then we go... And while they're fishing, Pa gives his backstory. He wasn't always poor, and he wasn't always mean. He had a, well, like almost everyone, like parents. His parents owned the plantation, mm-hmm. picking cotton and whatnot. And then, but they lost it during the Great Depression. Depression because of, you know, debts. Not fun. And later on, uh, Pa catches a basically a fish, and then he says... Looky here, hun. I got us a big one, big one, big as Alabama. And while later on, when Kyle's basically almost going to sleep, she, you know, hun, first time he calls her that. Oh, hun. Yeah, like. Like a term of endearment? Yeah. Okay. Which is, you know, getting weird for him. Out of character. Out of character, yeah, you go. There you go. And I guess. Again, he's changing for almost for the better. Almost little, and so far. Yeah, little by little. And then chapter eight, not much. Uh, we get 
uh, chapter eight is called negative data. And basically we're back to like present on Chase's murder. I'm pretty sure you forgot that name. Chase? No, I remember Chase. Uh, the old, old horn dog. Horn dog? You know, he likes sleeping around a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basketball player, had a girlfriend. Who's most football. likely... Conf- huh? He was a football player. He had a girlfriend though, right? He had a wife. Oh, wife. Yeah, so he committed in... Uh, what do you call it? Adultery. Adultery multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Even, even when he was... I'm pretty sure even when he had... He was married. Yeah, but we don't get much. Just there's not really any clues, no fingerprints, footprints, or tracks. But we do know is that his death took a place between October 29th and October 30th, midnight to 2 a.m. That's basically all we got. Two hour window. Yeah. So, chapter nine is called Jumping. We meet the character Jumping. He's black. It's not really. I don't know why I said that. Are people racist or something? Well, yeah, because this is 1960, so. Oh, oh yeah. People are hella racist. All I get what all these types of names and whatnot. Yeah, the hard art and whatnot. Yeah. So, and then. Paul pa introduces Kaya, or. Yeah, he introduces Kaya to jump in. And he takes pride in here. He's like, oh, this here's my daughter, which is, again. Even more our character. He's taking pride in Kaya. And before he kind of saw her as a nuisance and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But now he's taking pride in her. Maybe it's because it's he realized he didn't get child support from her, no? Uh, it's kind of his stuff. I still don't trust Paul as well. Yeah. And fair enough. He went, he's not doing so great. And he obviously... We can. He went to the army to get some money, so fair enough that he probably wants child support. Exactly. Even though he's kind of a jerk. Yeah. So needed. And then more out of characterization is that Paul takes Kaya to a diner. Before this, all she's eating has eaten is grits and whatnot. Hmm. You know what grits are? Grits. I know from that one song. You know, eggs, bacon, grits, sausage. Ah, oh, no. But oh. do you know what it is? No, not exactly. It's basically an eating, but not, nothing but oatmeal. Oh. Plain oatmeal. Oatmeal's pretty good. I guess. But plain isn't. For every day? Every day, yeah, I get bored of it. Yeah. So this is the, this is a change of pace for Kaya. And kind of nice for Paul to do for her. Yeah. So after they're basically f- finished eating, uh, Kaya... A little girl walks up to Kai and tries to like handshake her, but her mom takes her away, cause calling her Kaya dirty, messed up. She's just seven. Yeah, but she lives in the swamps or area or whatever, and I'm assuming she isn't dressed the best. Oh no. Maybe she looks dirty. Maybe she is, and the mom has every right. Maybe that's just messed up. Who knows? It's just seven men. She's seven, but if a seven-year-old's dirty, I ain't gonna want to touch that either. You want your kid touching that? Hell no. Jeez. I don't give a damn. If seven years old, or if it's just a baby, if it's dirty, it's dirty. <laughs> All right. So, but as Kai looks at the mother and the daughter, seeing how they're looking each other into each other's eyes, and kind of, I guess, wanting that too with her mom, own mom. So she misses a mother. Yeah, she wants her mother's love, parental love. Mm-hmm. And then, as they went back, Kaya's just having a little hope about. Well, she remembers how Pa is had beaten her and her mom, but she's having hope that maybe Ma will come back if she sees how Pa's, uh, basically changing for the better. And then, but we'll see quickly that, that there's no way in hell. All right. Yeah, because uh, later on, a letter comes in from Ma, and it's a blue. It's in a blue envelope, and Kai. She uh, Kai, she tries to like read the letter, but she can't. Mm-hmm. So, but she can't. The only thing she can read is her name. So, she leaves. Uh, 
the letter for Pa to read on like the countertop. And can you imagine how that goes? He gets angry. He, do, he gets angry. What do you think he does? Oh, yeah. See, I didn't trust him, but he needs that child support. <laughs> you gotta get that bag, huh? Yeah. Although, I still don't like the bastard. Yeah. So, well, he doesn't rip the letter because that'd be too nice. He burns Wait, it. too nice? Yeah, because, like, you can still, like, even though, like, you, you can rip it up, right? You can, like, still, I guess, piece it back together during, through time. I guess. So, he, he got rid of all the evidence, see? Yeah, but, like, if you burn it, there's basically nothing left mm. but ashes. And also, any trees she can use to, like, find her mom, too. Oh, kind of like a return return address? Address. Yeah, so that, that's that gone, too. Oh. That's fine. So, she's, st- now, she's pretty much stuck with this guy now. Yeah. For pretty much ever. Or for as long as he sticks around. And, well, like you say, we, you probably should trust Paul because you went straight back to his old ways, started shrinking again and saying you're... And then, I guess, Kaya loses her love for Faith or something like that? Or how would you word it? I guess her, her hope for Paul. Well, she loses hope, saying, uh, quote, just forget it. No God's going to come to this garden. Oh, she loses her faith? Yeah. I guess her faith, hope. Yeah. And she's still, keep in mind, again, still only seven. So she's got only seven years on this earth, and she's gone through quite the roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly you and I have had it better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't live in the swamps. No. No, we we're able to get fast food if we want, eat at home, sleep comfortably. Our dad doesn't come beat us up. Yeah. Well, <coughs> my dad uh, unnecessarily. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we're if you don't know, we're Mexican, and well, Mexicans like beating their kids for disciplinary. Disciplinary. Yeah, but you know, my mom don't need to be doing all that. I, I'm a good kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's not like I do anything that deserve a, a said beating. Well, we we never bled, have we? No. Well, yeah. There you go. Well, at least I have it. That we can remember? Nah, no, nah, I haven't. All right, well, there we yeah. are. So, certainly a better life so far. Yeah. yeah no, the most I believe is of my own mistakes, you know, like falling over, whatnot. Cutting yourself by accident? Cutting, yeah, cutting myself by, like, when I'm putting an orange or something. Yeah. That's so, my own fault. Well, moving on, on to chapter 10. Oh. Uh, I forgot what's called chapter ten. Uh, just grass in the wind, nineteen sixty nine. Okay. It's back to the present. Still nothing. Not like at all. No suspects. No leads. Well, the only thing we got is a possible boat remains or like markings of a boat that was on shore. But they just write that off as grass in the wind. Oh, because just pointing out, oh look, there's grass over here blowing in the wind. It's basically doing the same thing as those markings. Mm. So, yeah, quick chapter. Chapter 11. Uh, Pot comes home less and less. Or, yeah, wait, what's chapter 11? Uh, cracker sack full. Uh, and it's 1956, so Kai is 10 now, around there. Okay. So, Pot comes home less and less. Kai starts thinking that maybe after, like, since he's coming home less and less, that he might be dead. And, or he might be, or, yeah, he might be dead, ba- dead basically. And doesn't mourn him, so no, f- again, she doesn't really love him. She just, <laughs> she, uh, he's just there. Yeah, she's like, oh man. She's basically like, she fears, like, she bites her lip out of fear because she doesn't want to go with the authorities. Mm. She basically just wants him because she doesn't want to go with CPS. The also, system. Yeah. And also because he, <laughs> he kind of needs his money to, you know, buy food. Even then, that wasn't a lot of money. And uh, basically, Kaya's... Um, and she's right, because like, she's kind of running out of supplies. So she decides to... And at first, she thinks about going with the authority, but dismisses it, because she's like, the only family I still have is basically the Marsh. Mm. 
So she decides to stay. And so because she decided to stay, she uses the, I guess, skills her mom taught her and basically gets a job selling mussels. You know, those fish kind of things. Yeah, those little clams. Yeah. Um, we can kind of see like some parental love from jumping or maybe just pity. What, what would you think? Wait, how? Because jumping gives her more supplies than the muscles were worth. Ah, uh, that's you know pity, bro. Because, I mean, she's what ten years old. I'm pretty sure she's wearing all these types of ratty clothes. Maybe she don't look the best. You know, maybe she hasn't been to school. I'm assuming she has very poor dental health. I mean, well, if you remember, she tried going to school, but they made fun of her. So she's like, you know what? Screw this. I'm staying home. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, I, I would pity her too, but or maybe it's just simple kindness. Who knows? Yeah. Or maybe it's coming from somewhere else, you know? Yeah. So, Chapter 12, Penny, Pennies and Grits, still 1956. Kaya, uh, every so often, Kaya tries looking for Tate, and she sees him from time to time. And she sees Tate one time and tries to think of a way to have a start a conversation with him, but just kind of goes, oh, whatever. And, but, and leaves. And one day when she was going her way to like sell muscles or leaving back home, she sees a kid. Oh, well, no, my bad. That's later on. She basically sees kids on her way to like jump ins and sees how the kids are messing around and having fun. But she particularly looks at the girls and wants, she's not interested in boys. She just basically wants friends that are girls. Mm. So she wants that. Friend love? Companionship love? That girl love. <laughs> Makes it sound wrong. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm saying it in like a, in a sexual way. It's just like, pretty sure I've heard groups of girls saying, oh, girl love or girl power or something like that. You know you know how they always shovel in herds? <laughs> don't we, don't boys shovel in herds too? I don't. Well, some of us are loners. I guess, but I don't feel alone because like, there's always like, I'm always talking to people who just, they never travel in the same direction as me when I walk. They do travel in herds. They do. I'm telling you. Travel in herds. Just look around school the next time you go. And I guess she also kind of wants to make friends with, I guess, girls because, I, I don't know, they could be her sisters or like in place for sisters because, you know? Yeah. So. Replacements. Yeah. And. So now Kai basically tries to so get more money, but it's a kind of first serve, first come, first serve for selling. So jump in offers a word of advice, you know, maybe you should like, don't put all your eggs in one basket and try looking for another way to make money. So she does and tries, she tries smoking fish and selling it, but kind of looks, it looks worse. At least even something dogs wouldn't eat. <laughs> yeah. So then Jumping goes back home and we meet his wife, Mabel. And then they decide to basically look out for Kaya and get her a bunch of bunch of new clothes and supplies. And they give it to Kaya. So now she has new clothes and supplies. And I guess new step-in parents in a way? They real ones. Yeah, they real ones. They, so I don't think it's out of pity anymore. I think it's just out of... Just straight up, just kindness. You know, kind of like I would want someone to do that for me if I was in said situation. And who knows? They maybe they they can't have a kid, and they look as Kaya as a step in kid. Or if it works, it works, and it helps Kaya. So come for it. Or who knows? Maybe they lost the kid too. That too. That too. Yeah, which knowing this book probably probably is true. So on to chapter thirteen called Feathers, and it's nineteen sixty. So. Kai is 14 now. Okay. So, like you said, I guess she's reached that age. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. But, yeah. Uh, uh, now, here we go. Yeah, I was talking about earlier. Kai is on her way from jumping or to jumping. She sees a boy. And she doesn't know this boy. And she's weary of strangers. So, she runs away. And... She basically runs home and 
decide after running away, she goes into a clearing where she sees a feather on a stump, which is, you know, kind of weird. Because it was, like, perfectly in place, like, lodged into the thing. Oh, like yeah. a message type thing. Yeah, it was a mesh type of thing. And the feather that was left for Kaya was a blue, a great blue heron feather, particularly from the eyebrow or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, and she wants to grab it, but she ultimately pulls away, saying it's like thinking it might be a trap, and decides to go home. I mix that up. She she heads into a clearing, sees the feather. Doesn't take it, but she wants to, but ultimately decides to go home. Mm-hmm. But then while she's at home, she just feels a pull towards the feather for some reason. What do you feel? So she's obsessing over a feather. Well, she's a nature lover. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so she takes the feather and after like a few weeks of nothing, there was another left for her. A tropic, a tropic bird. Uh, those are, I guess, particularly particularly rare in that region of where I'm in North Carolina. They don't see them often, so it's a kind of a rare gift sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And she, well, again, takes it, and on her way home, she sees basically a bunch of turkeys attacking one hurt turkey, and it's kind of symbolism for the town versus Kaya because you know. If you're strange from society, society's gonna reject you, you know. Or if you're like the oddball out, or whatnot. Yeah, you're. If you're the oddball out, you're probably gonna be looked at as weird by a bunch of other people. So, and we also see that as how the town doesn't like her because of a bunch of basically a bunch of boys come in and harass her by like screaming and like slamming their fists on her door, mm-hmm. and just. Basically taunting her, and she's, you know, obviously afraid because, well. She's by herself, you know. <laughs> what you going to do, right? Against yeah. a bunch of boys. You get jumped, come on now. Yeah. But uh, even after she, like, when they leave, even though she was afraid, she looks at the feather that the boy and someone obviously left for her, and it gives her hope. Which is nice. And then chapter 14... I think it's called what red, yeah, red fibers. Back to present. Nothing happened. Nothing. Still no clues. Actually, we do kind of get clues in that there were red red fibers on Chase's jacket. But, All right, that's something, but not a lot. Yeah, it's basically it could be anything from your past, sure. It's quite what, literally a needle in a haystack. It basically, so. That was 14, right? Mm-hmm. On to chapter 15, and it's called The Game. So, uh, Kaya decides to, leave, decides to leave a feather for the boy. And it's the first time. And Kaya's kind of, like, intrigued because of this person. Because this is the first time someone came to, or, to her. And not her, like, meeting new people by herself. This one's actively trying to get to know her. Through feathers? Yeah. All right. Because, well, if Kai's a jumpy person, you know, and if you're jumpy, it's hard to gain your trust. Yeah. So, obviously, if you want to break, gain someone's trust, you you offer presents or something, you know? Or incentives. Yeah, you give something or, uh, like... I, give... think, I, think, I also think that maybe this could be some form of lure as in a trap, but who knows? <laughs> trap? A trap, yeah. Guess. Break her walls and whatnot. Yes. As we know, boys love hunting their prey, huh? <sighs> we can't hunt anything, can we? Some just aren't, aren't bothered to do anything at all because, I don't know, they want to have a good place first. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kaya cleans herself up for like. So now that she's older, right, I guess, she's doing more quote-unquote girly things. Like perking up her appearance and whatnot? Yeah, she, like, puts on her old mom's old sundress or something like that, puts on nice clothes. 
looks at nail polish and like tries putting on lipstick. Okay. So she's coming of age, I guess. Whatever happened to Tate? Uh, you'll see him. All right. Yeah, that's the home of Tate. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, she's putting on all this stuff. Just how you said, like, <laughs> what? Guess when we travel in hurts? She. <laughs> Which is messed up, but okay, we move. Bro, 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 okay, for real though, next time you go to school, look around. I get, well, you're not wrong, but still, there's a bunch of people who goop up. All right, moving on. We're kind of getting <laughs> on topic. She remembers how her mom and their sisters basically had a good time. Okay. And, well, just like you said, uh, her mom's basically said, hey, look, we, we can do things by ourselves, you know, girl power and whatnot. Okay. So... And after uh, the feather that Kyle left was taken, and another feather was put in again, like on the little trade thing. But this, t- and it was the feather of a knight in her. And these birds symbolize something, but I don't know what that means. I don't know any of these birds either. Yeah, man. We're just kind of, we like playing video games and whatnot. Yeah, we ain't nature lovers like that. We can appreciate nature. Yeah, I'll appreciate it every now and then, but I won't love it like that. Yeah, we don't understand anything. But, all right, and then next to the feather was a milk carton, and it had basically a bunch of supplies for her. Supplies that she really needed. Oh, well. And and she kind of thinks of it as she, she sees, I guess, the feathers as a proposal. Mm-hmm. Seeing as, you know, some animals will give, some male animals give female animals, like, presents, like rocks or whatnot. I'm pretty sure penguins do that. Yeah, like, they give rocks, right? It's like, yeah. hey, you want to get married? Like, they're all married way. Yeah. But she was like, you know, I'm too, I'm kind of too young for, propose, for like, getting married or something like that, or having kids or sailing down. Mm-hmm. And Kyle leaves another feather. I have a bald eagle or something like that. So, and later on, and speaking of Tate, the feather boy was Tate. Who would have known? Oh my goodness, that's such a surprise. Um, so, two nature lovers. Yeah. Uh, and then Kaya wants to run, but again, her feelings, in a way, feelings she doesn't quite comprehend. Because state gives her like a nice, warm feeling, a feeling of fulfillment or something like that. You feel the hole is left by your family? Yeah. All right. All right. And so, does her not really knowing what to do? Kaya offers her the feather. T- takes it and appreciates it because nature lover. And they talk. And after talking after a little while, uh, Tate offers her teaches offers Kaya how to read. So that would have been useful a couple years back. <laughs> yep. But yeah, you can't really blame them, can you? They're just me right now. Yeah. So, and all right. How do you think about like what kind of themes of love are coming up or whatnot? I think the physical love's coming up. You're not wrong. Physical love. Uh, right now, as much as a theme of love, I don't think as strongly as like oh, parental love right now because well, obviously he's an abuser. But for what's coming up next. Most definitely some physical love. And, you know, because, like, and also, like, I guess you could say that the feelings of Kai and Tate have is almost like, I guess, what, love at first sight sort of thing, you know? Maybe maybe on his side, but maybe not on her. But the thing is, right, she's like, ever since she was seven, she wanted that boy. Oh, oh, she wanted that boy, eh? Well, as a companion, but now she, like, feels new feelings of whatnot you know yeah so as we said the, uh there was some basically kaya's love has lost all parental love and but she also kind of gains new parental love from jumping at mabel mm-hmm. and a different form no her her love for tate also evolves yeah so uh now she's gonna be entering that world of you know physical and emotional love that you can't feel with siblings friends and i guess you can with friends she basically makes more deep love yeah and so you got any other uh idea uh thoughts on this or what 
Uh, I think it was the old man who killed Chase. Old man? Has to be the old man. Oh, it's always the old man, huh? Exactly. The old man's just onto something. He was jealous. Because of his wife cheated on him or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then, you know, twisted love in that, how Chase was murdered. Wait, what? Twisted love? Because, like, you know, suspects are, you know, the uh, wife. wives and husbands that are, you know, might be angry. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're from there. Revenge. But hey, what do we know? We're two idiots who came who haven't had girlfriends yet. Exactly. And we're trying to read into love in this book that's obviously way too complicated for us. For you, I haven't read the book. It's almost like for you, for now. All right, fair enough. I can understand high levels of comprehension and books like that. Nah, but yeah. Well, we're, we don't much. We don't know much about love. Not the only enough. love we've known so far is our family love and sibling love and friendly love. But sibling and parental are two of the same thing. I mean, family love, friendship love, and... That's basically it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, pet love. Oh, pet love, that could be one. Nah. She, nah. she doesn't have any pets, though. That's what she needs. She needs eagly, bro. Eagly? Eagly. Oh. That eagle... That's what she needs. All right, well, yeah. So those, I guess, are the things of love we can figure out so far. Uh, hopefully, you, uh, people understand love more better than us.